Now that you understand the process on how to set up strategic alliances, it's now important to have a few strategies and vehicles up your sleeve so when you come to the table to brainstorm ideas of how you can work together, you've got a few ideas there that you can uh, come up with. So let's look at them. The first one we're gonna cover is joint events. You know, events are just a great way of, of working together. I'm gonna do the, the two events here. So the first one is joint events. And the second one is host host beneficiary events. So joint events is where you run like a trade show or an education or some kind of value add for your customers and one or, or, or two or more of you, however many partners are involved in running the event, you all are hosts, you all help drive people to the event, you all do marketing to, to fill the event and you all get a chance to expose yourself in the event. If it's a trade show, then you've all got booze up. If it's an educational event, you all get a chance to speak. Um, or you bring in a guest speaker and you're all playing host to that guest speaker. It can look in a variety of ways, but the, the benefit is that you get, to, um, you get to provide value to your customers. You invite them out and they have a great time, so you're providing value to your customers and you also get exposure to the customers of the other businesses because they're all bringing people as well and you have a chance to start a relationship with them. Some important things to consider when you're doing a, a joint event is you want to have a mechanism in there so people can initiate a relationship with you and that mechanism needs to be talked about with all parties so that you're, you're all not trying to do you know, a different thing each and so when people who arrive they're getting bombarded by five different uh, companies to, to get their contact information and follow up. Look, that, that might be all right if it's a trade show. You've all got a, a place there where someone can drop their business card in, no problem. If you've got a speaking event uh, where three of you are speaking, you don't want to have three different feedback forms that people sign up to say, okay, yes, please follow up with me. You want to have one feedback form that lists all of you on there that someone can tick off to make it easy for the people there. So, I mean, in doing that, you've just got to put yourself in the shoes of the participant and look at what's going to make a great experience for them and uh, what's going to make it easy for them to initiate a relationship should they choose to do so. So running competitions, draws, all that kind of stuff can be, can be valuable there. Now, the difference between a joint event and a host Ben event, is a host Ben event is where one, one party plays the host. Um, so let's say for me, say I was inviting all my clients out to an event and I was inviting uh, a strategic alliance of mine who is a financial planner, I was inviting him in to speak. So I'm, I'm providing value to my, my clients because I'm giving them some information they didn't have before. It doesn't really cost me, I don't have to pay the speaker to come in. It might cost me something to put the event on to, if it's a physical location, a bit of food and coffee, uh, venue hire, that kind of stuff. Or if it's virtual, I mean, then there's no cost for it. I always have to organize the logistics. Uh, and for my strategic alliance, my financial planner, well, he gets exposure to, to my clients. Now, he has to provide value, and he's not there to sell, but he is there to provide value and then give people the chance to respond um, if, uh, if they so choose. So that's up to him or the two of us working together to work out what that mechanism is. So that's a, a way to run a host Ben event. Both of these are very, very powerful. I, I'm a huge fan of this one, uh, the host Ben event, because you can really provide some great value to your clients or get exposure to other people in a, a really value-oriented way. So two favorites here, uh, the joint, joint events and host Ben events. Obviously to run them and to market them, well, you've just got to follow the philosophies of the whole program. Um, you know, running through a campaign creation and all the comp key components that go in there, that would be the backbone of marketing either of these two events. So the next one we're talking about is cross promotion. Now this is where we have an offer of some kind that goes to our alliances database. And it can work both ways. So you might provide something to your alliance, they might provide something to you, or it can just go one way um, as well. You can just provide an offer for someone else. And the way you might do that is there's a couple of vehicles. One is invoice stuffers, so stuffers, invoice stuffers. It could be uh, email or, uh, or direct mail, right? You'll, um, 
your alliance partner might send a letter out promoting you to, to her, um, her clients or an email. Uh, it could be in store. Right, if you've got a physical location where you've got customers coming in, you can have some point of sale there. They might get given something when they, when they check out or after they've, they've been in. They might get something when they arrive. Uh, it might be, you know, in these cases here, it might be a thank you that goes out to customers. So yeah, yeah, here's a, a thank you for our A-list customers. Um, thanks for being a great customer as a, a benefit. We're going to provide you with X, Y, Z. I had a, a couple of clients have done this one. They set up an alliance. Well, one, one example in particular was a physio company that set up an alliance with a, a local farm who produced, this was a Canadian client, produced maple syrup. So they organized uh, to send out little, uh, as a little jar of, of you know, high grade maple syrup to their A-list clients. And so their, their clients would go out to pick it up. And when they're out there, they get their free maple syrup, but invariably they buy some other stuff from the farmer as well. So it was a great, uh, great cross uh, cross promotion. So these can be great I and mean, you can do these with any number of uh, partners but it can be a nice simple way to, to get some traction. Our fourth strategy or vehicle for uh, strategic alliances is content sharing. So in the world of information and you know, particularly looking at education based marketing sharing content it can be a great way to to cross promote each other in a more passive way in a, in a very value oriented way so this might look like uh, doing a guest blog on someone else's blog or website it might be writing an article in their newspaper it might be emailing a link to an article that was written by a uh, an alliance partner but they're generally the the methods that, that uh, you can use and it can be great to be used in conjunction uh, with some of these other events um, say if you send a, uh, a, a do a guest blog on someone else's website on there there might be an offer at the end of that to get something for free or you know a, a trial of something or sign up for something right so you can use that avenue to uh, to cost cross promote as well and finally number five is the good old-fashioned referral so this is where you just physically uh, voice a referral to someone, uh, either in person over the phone or by email introduction. But really the most powerful way that this can happen is if the referral is facilitated. And what I mean by that is, you know, let's say I was referring uh, my financial planner friend to one of my clients. I would actually do an email introduction between all of us, give a bit of a background and, and a nice warm introduction that, um, that facilitates the, the relationship starting. And I would obviously ask permission of my client before I made that introduction. Um, that's one way of doing it. Another way is to like, set up a lunch with three people or go golfing with, uh, if you're a golfer, you, you and your alliance partner, you bring, bring someone else each who you think would be a good fit for the other person. And that's a way of uh, making an introduction as well. Also a lot of fun. Um, but this is a good one. Uh, for particularly professionals, this one works really well. If you've got a larger database, um, you might need something a little more leveraged like a, an active referral program, where, and that could tie into some of this cross-promotion stuff as well, in-store promotion particularly. You could run competitions for your alliance partner. You know, you get to win something that your alliance partner is giving away that's high value. That can be, I mean, there, I guess all of these are a form of referral, what we're really talking about here is a specific direct uh, referral where you're just introducing someone to, uh, to your alliance partner. So with those five, it gives you a, a good um, toolbox now to go to the table. And within these, you start to get the feel there's lots of little ways you can vary them and get them to work together. I mean, this is not an exhaustive list by any means, but certainly enough to get you started. And you're really only catch by your, your creativity. When the two, two or more of you being your alliance partners get together, just let it go wild. I mean, throw all the ideas on the table. Don't rule anything out. You'll never, you can always be amazed by the ideas that can be spawned by some, um, some untethered brainstorming. So have fun with it. Good luck with your strategic alliances. And I look forward to hearing the good news.